Hello and welcome to my Imperial Knight and Armager Warglaive versus video or comparison video really. The Imperial Knight uh, came out um, in 2014, 3rd of March apparently. That's uh, when um, Super Saiyan unboxed it, so it's uh, and it's on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> Should I copyright myself? I don't know. Um, <laughs> So over four years ago, and then uh, a year later, or less than a year later, the new kit arrived, and all the new kit had in it was just an extra sprue um, with the, the Gatling cannon and the uh, Thunderstrike gauntlet, which the rules weren't amazing um, in 7th edition, but in 8th edition, yeah, they're, they're a fair bit better. Um, and it came with a carapace uh, weapon too, or, or choice of uh, a couple of them, the, the, uh, the auto cannons or the two mis different missile pods. So that's pretty cool. So we've had the Imperial Knight for four years um, and now Games Workshop have introduced, uh, I say a new knight. They are in the, the knightly houses, but uh, they're piloted by the lesser nobles of, of a knight household. Their lineage is not directly linked um, to the lords of the court, but they do take the role of a, a pilot. They are very fast, uh, you could say spearheading uh, uh, Imperial Knights advance. These sort of standard knights, uh, as you will, have a movement of um, <clears throat> 12 inches. I will be comparing this one directly to the one on the right, the, the Knight Errant. Presently, you only get one flavor of Armager Warglaive Knights, um, which are the ones with the thermal spears. Uh, no doubt they'll have um, some kind of better um, ballistic weapon or, or something like that as Games Workshop release different sprues and maybe Forge World even introduce different uh, resin upgrade parts, but we'll see. However, we've got much more flavor now with the, uh, the Imperial Knights. You've got the Errants, which this one is, you've got the Paladins, uh, you've got the Wardens, the Gallants, and the Crusaders. And we've already seen uh, the sneak peek video uh, of the Castellans, which are, they don't have any close combat weapons. Um, they have point defense weapons hanging next to their um, heads. No point defense on the rear though. And they've got no uh, sort of close combat weapons, but they're, they're, they've got a lot of gun. Definitely reminds me of uh, the Warlord Titans. So the Imperial Knights are finally getting more models to, to flesh them out. Uh, I say a bigger, sort of more equipped Imperial Knight and a smaller, faster, um, sort of more agile armager. So I love these kind of videos, kind of like a, a, a which Imperial Knight is best for you um, kind of thing going on. They're both Lord of Wars, however, Armager Warglaives, um, you can basically buy three of them, which is going to set you back um, almost 700 points or so, especially if you equip all of them with the Melter Guns on the Carapace. But you can get three of them in sort of one Lord of War uh, choice, which is great. However, Imperial Knights, it's just one uh, Lord of War choice uh, per Knight. Power points cost, the Warglaive is 12 and the Knight Errant is 23. So a bit more than half the power points cost and you're gonna be spending 440 points uh, on the Knight Errant there in match play. Whereas the Warglaive, you're gonna be spending 240. So it's basically 200 points more for the Knight Errant uh, in match play. They're both affected uh, by damage in terms of uh, their remaining wounds. The Knight Errant does have double the number of wounds though, it has 24. Um, it's not a f as fast as I mentioned, it's only 12 inch movement and it's weapon skill and ballistic skill. They're bo both of the units are affected by um, when they lose wounds. Um, they go down to the baseline of five plus. It's important to note that the Armager uh, can still move seven inches when it's got one to three, when it's got a few wounds left. Uh, and the Errant, when it's got one to six wounds left, can move six inches. They both have the Iron Shield, uh, which is the five plus and vulnerable save against shooting attacks. They both have a three plus normal save. They both have four attacks. Uh, the Knight Errant has a better leadership at nine though, and a better toughness at eight, and a better base strength of eight too. The Reaper Chainsword, instead of doubling the uh, strength, it adds four, so it's got a strength of 12, which is actually the same strength as the Warglaive. So try not to overlook that Reaper Chain Cleaver uh, at all. Um, the Reaper Chainsword adds four to the strength, so it's strength 12, AP minus three, and a damage of six. The Chain Cleaver 
same strength, 12, same AP minus three, but it's only got damage three instead of damage six. So I think that's an important note to make, that the melee weapon is almost on par. The thermal spear then, compared to the thermal cannon, well, the thermal spear is only the 30 inch range as opposed to 36 inch, and the thermal cannon is heavy D6 rather than assault D3. That's a tricky one there because statistics wise, uh, the thermal spear has a better chance of getting two, two or three shots than getting one shot whereas the thermal cannon only has a 50% chance of getting uh, four or more shots. So again, that sort of balances itself out, um, getting two or possibly getting four or more. It's also a better strength on the errant, the strength nine. Same AP though, AP minus four, and same damage D6, and it's still got that melter rule, um, where if uh, the unit is within half range of the weapon, two dice, and discard the lowest. Now, you've got a better chance um, of inflicting more damage with the Errant's weapons, well, both of them really, um, you know, with the Reaper Chainsaw being damage D6, um, even though it's at the same strength, and with the Thermal Cannon having possibly six shots, and with it being further range, but also you only need to get into a range of 18 inches to take advantage of that Melter Rule, rather than 15 inches of the Thermal Spear. So you've got an extra three inches of, of breathing room in reality. What the Warglaive doesn't have though, um, which the Errant does, is this uh, super heavy walker. It has more access to weapons currently. This may change in the codex. It can still have a melter gun there for its pintle weapon. It can have a Thunderstrike gauntlet instead, and it can use its titanic feet, which the Warglaive can't. The Warglaive isn't a super heavy walker, and you may opt to use the titanic feat uh, for the Erin instead of the, the main Reaper Chainsword because it's still strength 8, still AP minus 2, but you're getting damage D3 um, and you get 3 hit rolls for each attack. So that's 12, 12 attacks at strength 8. That's nothing to overlook. You can also add carapace weapons to it, so you've got the main thermal cannon, then you've got the heavy stubber or melter gun, and then you've got the carapace uh, weapons, which could be the uh, twin Icarus auto cannons, the storm spear rocket pods, or the iron storm missile pods. Um, so you've got the ability there of uh, some anti armor or even some anti flying defensive capabilities. Because it's super heavy too, uh, it can fall back and still shoot or charge in the same turn. Um, it can also move over in enemy infantry models, and it can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering any penalty to its hit rolls. It only gains a bonus to the save for being in cover if at least half the model is obscured from the firer, which is something that the Warglaive can get away with uh, to some extent if it is in cover. It can get a little bit of a, uh, a cover save if it's partially um, covered. So the real question is, if the Knight Errant is double the cost in terms of points and power points cost. Um, is it better to have one Knight Errant or two Warglaives? That's the question I like to put to people. Now, the Warglaives do have their effective range of 44 inches, but the Knight Errants have an effective range of 48 inches, and they can move and shoot. So the Knight Errant could get one shot off on a Warglaive, and then the Warglaive could close the distance, but not be able to shoot the Thermal Spear. The damage wouldn't be sufficient to wipe out a Warglaive in one hit anyway. Um, but then when the Warglaives move in again, they're going to be able to fire possibly six shots into an Errant, with possibly damage of 12. Worst case scenario for the Errant, which probably wouldn't happen because of its Iron Shield and things, would be it loses half of its wounds. Then the uh, Warglaives could close in again, and possibly and finish it off, but probably not before a Knight Errant took one of them down. And then in close combat, they've got a similar close combat weapon, but the Reaper Chainsaw just cuts it with that damage six rather than damage three. So it would be a close battle. And that's great because it shows that it's very balanced. Um, I do like the Knight Errant super heavy uh, walker rules, but I do like the Warglaive being able to take three of them then they go out on their little uh, hunting sprees. It's nice that their movement is 14 inches. I think any more would be a bit, well, a bit crazy for a walker. 
and I do like their thermal spears at 30 inches. I think 36 inches would be a bit too far. It's going to be great to see if Games Workshop or Forge World model or create any uh, different weapons um, for these war glaives because they've definitely been created with that in mind, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, which ones do you prefer? Do you prefer the, the good old uh, trusted Imperial Knights or do you like these Armager war glaives? Or would you just sack either of these two and wait for the volcano cannon equipped macro plasma culverin quad melter gun death castellan mini warlord knight um <laughs> please do put it in the comments below It'd be great to hear from you thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects